one of the complex aspects of the autonomic nervous system, but nevertheless a crucial point for the understanding of pharmacology is the idea of multiple kinds of receptors and the idea that a message can mean different things to different cells. So for example, if you were to find out that it was snowing, it was a cold snowy day, is that good news or bad news? Well, if you have to drive through it, maybe that's bad news. But if you're looking forward to winter sports, well, that would be wonderful news. So the same message that it snowed is neither good nor bad. It's how an individual is prepared to react to that news. In the same way, if you were to ask about a neurotransmitter like acetylcholine, is it excitatory? Does it depolarize the next cell and get a closer to action potential? Or is it inhibitory, um, hyperpolarizing the next cell? and making it farther from action potential. Well, that depends on the cell that reacts to it. So in neuromuscular junctions, where a neuron has synapses with skeletal muscle, acetylcholine is excitatory. But acetylcholine is what the vagus nerve uh, releases uh, to inhibit the heart, to slow down heart rate, to decrease contractibility. And so the same message which stimulates skeletal muscle will inhibit cardiac muscle. If one were to refer to a neuron as cholinergic or adrenergic, that would mean the neuron releases acetylcholine from its, its synaptic knobs if it's cholinergic, or it releases uh, norepinephrine from its synaptic knobs if it's adrenergic. But obviously these are signals which are meant to affect the next cell, after, uh, the postganglionic neuron, a skeletal muscle, a gland. And so that second cell must have receptors. And so there are cholinergic receptors which respond to acetylcholine, adrenergic receptors which respond to norepinephrine. And there are different kinds of each. So cholinergic receptors come in different classes and be, can be classified as nicotinic or muscarinic. Adrenergic receptors come in different classes and can be classified as alpha or beta. Both of these receptors are cholinergic because they respond to acetylcholine. Nicotinic receptors uh, respond to nicotine. These receptors are found on all postganglionic neurons, all preganglionic neurons in the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions release acetylcholine, and their um, postganglionic uh, neurons with which they synapse all make nicotinic uh, receptors. Um, they are also used by the chromaffin cells in the adrenal medulla, which will then release epinephrine and norepinephrine. And in addition to being found in the autonomic nervous system, they can also be found in skeletal muscle cells. Acetylcholine always excites this type of receptor. In contrast, muscarinic receptors, which respond to the mushroom poison muscarine, um, are found in the effectors of the parasympathetic uh, division. So uh, the heart, the stomach, uh, the lungs, etc., are all respond to the parasympathetic uh, acetylcholine release with muscarinic receptors. Um, and in the sympathetic division, eccrine sweat glands respond to sympathetic stimulation using muscarinic uh, receptors. Uh, the effect of acetylcholine varies because there are different kinds of muscarinic uh, receptors, and so uh, depending on which receptor type a cell has, it can either stimulate or inhibit the effector cell. So for example, uh, a muscarinic uh, subclass can stimulate smooth muscle after binding to acetylcholine, while a different subclass can inhibit cardiac muscle. In the same way, adrenergic receptors vary. Some are classified as alpha and some as beta. They occur in different regions of the body. The alpha-1 receptors are found in blood vessels, the pupil of the eye and sphincter muscles, alpha-2 receptors in the pancreas, beta-1 receptors in the heart, the kidneys, and in adipose, beta-2 receptors in the lungs, blood vessels of the heart, the liver, and in skeletal muscle, and beta-3 receptors in adipose. Some of these stimulate uh, the cell after binding to norepinephrine, while others inhibit uh, the cell. 
This concept is essential in pharmacology because if there was only one type of receptor in the autonomic nervous system, then any medication which affected, say, blood pressure would also affect asthma and bronchodilation and would affect the eye and the urinary bladder. But because there is this diversity of receptors, then medications can be developed which affect one aspect of uh, the visceral system. So uh, some medications affect uh, glaucoma or affect uh, uh, the ease of urination or affect blood pressure or congestion or can treat asthma, etc., without affecting all of uh, the organs. So an understanding of the diversity of the receptors of the autonomic nervous system is essential in pharmacology.